Hi everyone, welcome to my beginner music theory level, uh, lesson one. This lesson is going to be about the music staff, the clefs we can use, and ledger lines. Let's get started. So, I've opened up musictheory.net here, which I showed you guys in the introductory video, and I'm on the lessons section, and I'm gonna click on the staff, clefs, and ledger lines, and this is the lesson we're gonna work on today. So, the staff is the foundation upon which notes are drawn. Basically, this is how we are able to put on paper the sounds that we hear when we play music so that we can read it later. The modern staff is made up of five lines and four spaces in between. And uh, as you can see soon enough, you we can actually make use of the space above and below the staff as well. Every line and space in the staff represents a white key on the keyboard. So those of you that are not familiar with the keyboard because you don't play piano or maybe you just haven't uh, ever gotten a chance to sit down on a piano and look at it, uh, there's actually a great tool within this website that allows you to uh, kind of see the keyboard and play around with it. And it's at the top right corner right here, this little piano. If you click on that, I actually have it open already. You'll get this little keyboard pop-up window that is really cool because not only can you see the layout of the piano, but you can click on the keys and you'll hear sound. Okay, uh, so you can also choose this mark option and you can kind of like click on different keys and you'll see a red button. So feel free to play around with this. I think it's a great way to get familiar with the keyboard. And I think that's really important for anybody, not just piano students, uh, to really understand the keyboard because it gives us such a clear visual representation of uh, the pitches that we play. So moving on. So we use these symbols called clefs to kind of assign different node names to the nodes and lines in the staff. And we do that because there are a lot of different pitches and a wide range of pitches that one can write. There's not enough space in a single staff to write all of them. So we use the clefs to kind of change which part of the pitches we're writing. And I'll, you'll see very clearly what it means as we go through this. Uh, the main two clefs that are used are the treble clef and the bass clef. The treble clef is used for high pitch instruments like the violin and the flute. The bass clef is used for lower pitch instruments like the cello and the bass. We also have other clefs out there like you might have he heard of alto clef which the violas use. Um, this lesson will not cover that but we will talk about that in a, another lesson in the future. So we'll focus on the treble and the bass clef because they're the most widely used. So talk about the treble clef first. It's also called the G clef. And the reason why is because the beginning of the spiral that makes the clef, if you can see with my mouse, I'm kind of going around. The middle of that spiral or that circle is centered right on the second line. And that second line is going to be G. And it's not just going to be any G, it's going to be G specifically here. And which is going to be directly above middle C. Middle C is this right here, which is also marked C4. Middle C, all that really means, and it's very easy to visualize actually, if you look at the piano. So middle C is usually your C key that is right in the middle of the keyboard. If you're looking at a piano and you have more keys than my keyboard, which only has 49, a piano has 88, so it's even longer. But the C right in the middle of the keyboard is gonna be your middle C, okay? And it sounds like this. And the, this G is gonna be directly above C or rather a fifth 
away. So C, D, E, F, G. So as we read through, when we go up the staff, we go kind of be going back and forth between lines and spaces, lines and spaces, line and space, and so on. When we go up the staff, we're going up in pitch. We're also going forward in the musical alphabet. So we go from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then back to A once we run out. If we're going down on the staff, we're going backwards in the musical alphabet. So we'll be doing A, G, F, E, so on and so forth. And when we go down the staff, we're going to be following the same idea. We're gonna go from space to line, space to line, space to line. So here we're going up the staff. So we started in G here on the second line. The next space is gonna be A. And if we go to the next line, is go that's going to be B. So we see we went from space to line. And if we keep going, we end up with uh, basically a scale going up the musical alphabet. If you were to look at this the other way too, if you would start, if you were to start from the right, even though we don't read music that way, but if you started here and you went down the staff, you'd be reading the musical alphabet backwards and you'd be going lower in pitch. So what do we do when we run out of space in the staff? Because we're going to want to write higher pitches than this G, which is not actually that high. We're also going to want to be to write lower notes than can fit in the staff down here. So what we do for that is we use what are called ledger lines. Ledger lines are small lines that we write across the note head. And what it does is that it temporarily extends the staff above or below so that we can write more pitches. So here we've added a note on a ledger line so that we can go from this final G on the staff to a, the next note up in the scale. And we can do the same thing at the bottom of the staff. So let's talk about the bass clef. The bass clef is uh, used for lower, uh, for lower instruments because it represents a lower range of pitches. It's also called the F clef because this line here between the two dots and centered around the circle that starts the clef is the F line. And this is what's being called. And if we fill up a few different pitches on the staff, we will see that reading the staff is basically the same thing even in a different clef. It's just where the notes are placed are different. But here, if we go up, we go step by step, F, G, A, and if we go down, we go F, E, D, C, B, A, G. So what if we could combine both clefs to write a wider range of pitches? So that's what we call the grand staff. The grand staff is used by uh, piano music so that they can write uh, all the low notes that can be reached with the left hand on the keyboard and also all the high notes that can be reached with the right hand on the keyboard. So the grand staff works like this. We get two separate uh, staff, side by side, not side by side, one on top of the other. And then what we do is we add a treble clef to the one on the top and a bass clef to the one at the bottom. And that gives us the ability to now use both. The nice thing about this setup is that there is a point in the middle where they meet and that happens to be middle C, which is the same C we looked at before. Now, this middle C is both the first bottom ledger line of the top staff with the treble clef but it can also be looked at as being the first top ledger line of this bottom staff with the bass clef. 
I'm going to show you this a little bit more clearly using NoteFlight. So NoteFlight is the uh, music notation software that I showed you guys in the intro. And we can use it to kind of write our own music. And I encourage you to play around with it. It's really uh, fun and it's a useful thing to be able to write your music. But we're gonna use it so that I can show you guys what happens when we use both the treble and the bass clefs together. And by the way, as I type notes here, keep an eye down here, because you're gonna see the keys activate as I write notes, so that you can see what the note on the staff matches with the keyboard. It's a good way to get used to seeing how they work together. So let's say I wanna write a C major scale going down. If you're not familiar with major scales, don't worry about it, just it, only the white keys on the keyboard. So start with this C in the treble clef, and we're gonna go down. So C, B, A, G. We're going step by step, going between space and line, down the staff, just like we did before. Next is F. Next is E, D, and finally C. So, now, if we continue the scale, we can keep adding ledger lines to the treble clef. So now we have a B. Uh, once we run out of one ledger line, we add a second ledger line, and that's A, and then G, and we need another ledger line for the next one, F, E, so we can continue this, but it eventually becomes really hard to read these many ledger lines and it takes up a lot of space. I ended up having to like push the other staff down. Did you see that? So we don't, we try not to use too many ledger lines, especially at the bottom of the treble clef because we can use the bass clef for that. And I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna delete that one actually. So instead I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna write that same middle C, but this time in the bottom staff with bass clef. So this C, remember, is the same C as this one. So just like this one was the first ledger line at the bottom of the staff, this C, also middle C, is the first ledger line at the top of the staff. So you see where they meet. Now, let's continue the scale. And I'll write B next, A, G, F, E, D, C. So here now you can see we have two octaves. If you're not familiar with an octave, that's we'll be covering that later in intervals. But think of the octave as just eight notes in a row like this from C eight notes down to the next C. Uh, so we have one octave here on the treble clef, and then we have another octave, another eight notes on the bottom. Let's hear what that sounds like so that you see that the scale is continuous. And let's play that. So you heard when we got to the middle, it just played C again, the same exact C. One was from the top staff and the other one was from the bottom staff on, with the bass clef. So you can hear that they're exactly the same pitch, middle C. Anyway, uh, that covers our lesson for now. I encourage you to go to musictheory.net now and uh, click on the exercises section and go to the next, the first exercise there, uh, the node recognition. That way you can play around with it and practice this at home. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.